story three of a changed man and other tales by thomas hardy this librivox recording is in the public domain story three alicia's diary chapters four through six chapter four she beholds the attractive stranger february sixteenth we have had such a dull life here all the winter that i have found nothing important enough to set down and broke off my journal accordingly i resume it now to make an entry on the subject of dear caroline's future it seems that she was too grieved immediately after the loss of our mother to answer definitely the question of m de la feste how long the postponement was to be then afterwards it was agreed that the matter should be discussed on his autumn visit but as he did not come it has remained in abeyance till this week when caroline with the greatest simplicity and confidence has written to him without any further pressure on his part and told him that she is quite ready to fix the time and will do so as soon as he arrives to see her she is a little frightened now lest it should seem forward in her to have revived the subject of her own accord but she may assume that his question has been waiting on for an answer ever since and that she has therefore acted only within her promise in truth the secret at the bottom of it all is that she is somewhat saddened because he has not latterly reminded her of the pause in their affairs that in short his original impatience to possess her is not now found to animate him so obviously i suppose that he loves her as much as ever indeed i am sure he must do so seeing how lovable she is it is mostly thus with all men when women are out of their sight they grow negligent caroline must have patience and remember that a man of his genius has many and important calls upon his time in justice to her i must add that she does remember it fairly well and has as much patience as any girl ever had in the circumstances he hopes to come at the beginning of april at the latest well when he comes we shall see him april five i think that what m de la feste writes is reasonable enough though caroline looks heartsick about it it is hardly worth while for him to cross all the way to england and back just now while the sea is so turbulent seeing that he will be obliged in any event to come in may when he has to be in london for professional purposes at which time he can take us easily on his way both coming and going when caroline becomes his wife she will be more practical no doubt but she is such a child as yet that there is no contenting her with reasons however the time will pass quickly there being so much to do in preparing a trousseau for her which must now be put in hand in order that we may have plenty of leisure to get it ready on no account must caroline be married in half mourning i am sure that mother could she know would not wish it and it is odd that caroline should be so intractably persistent on this point when she is usually so yielding april thirtieth this month has flown on swallow's wings we are in a great state of excitement i as much as she i cannot quite tell why he is really coming in ten days he says may nine four p m i am so agitated i can scarcely write and yet am particularly impelled to do so before leaving my room it is the unexpected shape of an expected event which has caused my absurd excitement which proves me almost as much a schoolgirl as caroline m de la festa was not as we understood to have come till to-morrow but he is here just arrived all household directions have devolved upon me for my father not thinking m de la feste would appear before us for another four-and-twenty hours left home before post-time to attend a distant consecration and hence caroline and i were in no small excitement when charles letter was opened and we read that he had been unexpectedly favoured in the dispatch of his studio work and would follow his letter in a few hours we sent the covered carriage to meet the train indicated and waited like two newly strung harps for the first sound of the returning wheels at last we heard them on the gravel and the question arose who was to receive him 
it was strictly speaking my duty but i felt timid i could not help shirking it and insisted that caroline should go down she did not however go near the door as she usually does when anybody is expected but waited palpitating in the drawing-room he little thought when he saw the silent hall and the apparently deserted house how that house was at the very same moment alive and throbbing with interest under the surface i stood at the back of the upper landing where nobody could see me from downstairs and heard him walk across the hall a lighter step than my father's and heard him then go into the drawing-room and the servant shut the door behind him and go away what a pretty lovers meeting they must have had in there all to themselves caroline's sweet face looking up from her black gown how it must have touched him i know she wept very much for i heard her and her eyes will be red afterwards and no wonder poor dear though she is no doubt happy i can imagine what she is telling him while i write this her fears lest anything should have happened to prevent his coming after all gentle smiling reproaches for his long delay and uh, things of that sort his two portmanteaus are at this moment crossing the landing on the way to his room i wonder if i ought to go down a little later i have seen him it was not at all in the way that i intended to encounter him and i am vexed just after his portmanteaus were brought up i went out from my room to descend when at the moment of stepping towards the first stair my eyes were caught by an object in the hall below and i paused for an instant till i saw that it was a bundle of canvas and sticks composing a sketching tent and easel at the same nick of time the drawing-room door opened and the affianced pair came out they were saying they would go into the garden and he waited a moment while she put on her hat my idea was to let them pass on without seeing me since they seemed not to want my company but i had got too far on the landing to retreat he looked up and stood staring at me engrossed to a dreamlike fixity thereupon i too instead of advancing as i ought to have done stood moonstruck and awkward and before i could gather my weak senses sufficiently to descend she had called him and they went out by the garden door together i then thought of following them but have changed my mind and come here to jot down these few lines it is all i am fit for he is even more handsome than i expected i was right in feeling he must have an attraction beyond that of form it appeared even in that momentary glance how happy caroline ought to be but i must of course go down to be ready with tea in the drawing-room by the time they come indoors eleven p m i have made the acquaintance of monsieur de la feste and i seem to be another woman from the effect of it i cannot describe why this should be so but conversation with him appears to expand the view and open the heart and raise one as upon stilts to wider prospects he has a good intellectual forehead perfect eyebrows dark hair and eyes an animated manner and a persuasive voice his voice is soft in quality too soft for a man perhaps and yet on second thoughts i would not have it less so we have been talking of his art i had no notion that art demanded such sacrifices or such tender devotion or that there were two roads for choice within its precincts the road of vulgar money-making and the road of high aims and consequent inappreciation for many long years by the public that he has adopted the latter need not be said to those who understand him it is a blessing for caroline that she has been chosen by such a man and she ought not to lament at postponements and delays since they have arisen unavoidably whether he finds hers a sufficiently rich nature intellectually and emotionally for his own i know not but he seems occasionally to be disappointed at her simple views of things does he really feel such love for her at this moment as he no doubt believes himself to be feeling and as he no doubt hopes to feel for the remainder of his life towards her 
it was a curious thing he told me when we were left for a few minutes alone that caroline had alluded so slightly to me in her conversation and letters that he had not realized my presence in the house here at all but of course it was only natural that she should write and talk most about herself i suppose it was on account of the fact of his being taken in some measure unawares that i caught him on two or three occasions regarding me fixedly in a way that disquieted me somewhat having been lately in so little society till my glance aroused him from his reverie and he looked elsewhere in some confusion it was fortunate that he did so and thus failed to notice my own it shows that he too is not particularly a society person may ten have had another interesting conversation with monsieur de la festa on schools of landscape painting in the drawing-room after dinner this evening my father having fallen asleep and left nobody but caroline and myself for charles to talk to i did not mean to say so much to him and had taken a volume of modern painters from the bookcase to occupy myself with while leaving the two lovers to themselves but he would include me in his audience and i was obliged to lay the book aside however i insisted on keeping caroline in the conversation though her views on pictorial art were only too charmingly crude and primitive to-morrow if fine we are all three going to wherryborne wood where charles will give us practical illustrations of the principles of colouring that he has enumerated to-night i am determined not to occupy his attention to the exclusion of caroline and my plan is that when we are in the densest part of the wood i will lag behind and slip away and leave them to return by themselves i suppose the reason of his attentiveness to me lies in his simply wishing to win the good opinion of one who is so closely united to caroline and so likely to influence her good opinion of him may eleven late i cannot sleep and in desperation have lit my candle and taken up my pen my restlessness is occasioned by what has occurred to-day which at first i did not mean to write down or trust to any heart but my own we went to wherryborne wood caroline charles and i as we had intended and walked all three along the green track through the midst charles in the middle between caroline and myself presently i found that as usual he and i were the only talkers caroline amusing herself by observing birds and squirrels as she walked docilely alongside her betrothed having noticed this i dropped behind at the first opportunity and slipped among the trees in a direction in which i knew i should find another path that would take me home upon this track i by and by emerged and walked along it in silent thought till at a bend i suddenly encountered m de la feste standing stock-still and smiling thoughtfully at me where is caroline said i only a little way off says he when we missed you from behind us we thought you might have mistaken the direction we had followed so she has gone one way to find you and i have come this way we then went back to find caroline but could not discover her anywhere and the upshot was that he and i were wandering about the woods alone for more than an hour on reaching home we found she had given us up after searching a little while and arrived there some time before i should not be so disturbed by the incident if i had not perceived that during her absence from us he did not make any earnest effort to rediscover her and in answer to my repeated expression of wonder as to whither she could have wandered he only said oh she's quite safe she told me she knew the way home from any part of this wood let us go on with our talk i assure you i value this privilege of being with one i so much admire more than you can imagine and other things of that kind i was so foolish as to show a little perturbation i cannot tell why i did not control myself and i think he noticed that i was not cool caroline has with her simple good faith thought nothing of the occurrence yet altogether i am not satisfied chapter five her situation is a trying one may fifteen 
the more i think of it day after day the more convinced i am that my suspicions are true he is too interested in me well in plain words loves me or not to degrade that phrase has a wild passion for me and his affection for caroline is that towards a sister only that is the distressing truth how it has come about i cannot tell and it wears upon me a hundred little circumstances have revealed this to me and the longer i dwell upon it the more agitating does the consideration become heaven only can help me out of the terrible difficulty in which this has placed me i have done nothing to encourage him to be faithless to her i have studiously kept out of his way have persistently refused to be a third in their interviews yet all to no purpose some fatality has seemed to rule ever since he came to the house that this disastrous inversion of things should arise if i had only foreseen the possibility of it before he arrived how gladly would i have departed on some visit or other to the meanest friend to hinder such an apparent treachery but i blindly welcomed him indeed made myself particularly agreeable to him for her sake there is no possibility of my suspicions being wrong not until they have reached absolute certainty have i dared even to admit the truth to myself his conduct to-day would have proved them true had i entertained no previous apprehensions some photographs of myself came for me by post and they were handed round at the breakfast-table and criticised i put them temporarily on a side-table and did not remember them until an hour afterwards when i was in my own room on going to fetch them i discovered him standing at the table with his back towards the door bending over the photographs one of which he raised to his lips the witnessing this act so frightened me that i crept away to escape observation it was the climax to a series of slight and significant actions all tending to the same conclusion the question for me now is what am i to do to go away is what first occurs to me but what reason can i give caroline and my father for such a step besides it might precipitate some sort of catastrophe by driving charles to desperation for the present therefore i have decided that i can only wait though his contiguity is strangely disturbing to me now and i hardly retain strength of mind to encounter him how will the distressing complication end may nineteen and so it has come my mere avoidance of him has precipitated the worst issue a declaration i had occasion to go into the kitchen garden to gather some of the double ragged robins which grew in a corner there almost as soon as i had entered i heard footsteps without the door opened and shut and i turned to behold him just inside it as the garden is closed by four walls and the gardener was absent the spot ensured absolute privacy he came along the path by the asparagus bed and overtook me you know why i come elisha said he in a tremulous voice i said nothing and hung my head for by his tone i did know yes he went on it is you i love my sentiment towards your sister is one of affection too but protective tutelary affection no more say what you will i cannot help it i mistook my feeling for her and i know how much i am to blame for my want of self-knowledge i have fought against this discovery night and day but it cannot be concealed why did i ever see you since i could not see you till i had committed myself at the moment my eyes beheld you on that day of my arrival i said this is the woman for whom my manhood has waited ever since an unaccountable fascination has riveted my heart to you answer one word oh monsieur de la feste i burst out what i said more i cannot remember but i suppose that the misery i was in showed pretty plainly for he said something must be done to let her know perhaps i have mistaken her affection too but all depends upon what you feel i cannot tell what i feel said i except that this seems terrible treachery and every moment that i stay with you here makes it worse try to keep faith with her 
her young heart is tender believe me there is no mistake in the quality of her love for you would there were this would kill her if she knew it he sighed heavily she ought never to be my wife he said leaving my own happiness out of the question it would be a cruelty to her to unite her to me i said i could not hear such words from him and begged him in tears to go away he obeyed and i heard the garden door shut behind him what is to be the end of the announcement and the fate of caroline may twenty i put a good deal on paper yesterday and yet not all i was in truth hoping against hope against conviction against too conscious self-judgment i scarcely dare own the truth now yet it relieves my aching heart to set it down yes i love him that is the dreadful fact and i can no longer parry evade or deny it to myself though to the rest of the world it can never be owned i love caroline's betrothed and he loves me it is no yesterday's passion cultivated by our converse it came at first sight independently of my will and my talk with him yesterday made rather against it than for it but alas did not quench it god forgive us both for this terrible treachery may twenty five all is vague our course is shapeless he comes and goes being occupied ostensibly at least with sketching in his tent in the wood whether he and she see each other privately i cannot tell but i rather think they do not that she sadly awaits him and he does not appear not a sign from him that my repulse has done him any good or that he will endeavour to keep faith with her oh if i only had the compulsion of a god and the self-sacrifice of a martyr may thirty one it has all ended or rather this act of the sad drama has ended in nothing he has left us no day for the fulfilment of the engagement with caroline is named my father not being the man to press any one on such a matter or indeed to interfere in any way we two girls are in fact quite defenceless in a case of this kind lovers may come when they choose and desert when they choose poor father is too urbane to utter a word of remonstrance or inquiry moreover as the approved of my dead mother Monsieur de la festa has a sort of autocratic power with my father who holds it unkind to her memory to have an opinion about him i feeling it my duty asked m de la feste at the last moment about the engagement in a voice i could not keep firm since the death of your mother all has been indefinite all he said gloomily that was the whole possibly Quarryborn rectory may see him no more june seven m de la feste has written one letter to her one to me hers could not have been very warm for she did not brighten on reading it mine was an ordinary note of friendship filling an ordinary sheet of paper which i handed over to caroline when i had finished looking it through but there was a scrap of paper in the bottom of the envelope which i dared not show any one this scrap is his real letter i scanned it alone in my room trembling hot and cold by turns he tells me he is very wretched that he deplores what has happened but was helpless why did i let him see me if only to make him faithless alas alas june twenty one my dear caroline has lost appetite spirits health hope deferred maketh the heart sick his letters to her grow colder if indeed he has written more than one he has refrained from writing again to me he knows it is no use altogether the situation that he and she and i are in is melancholy in the extreme why are human hearts so perverse chapter six her ingenuity instigates her september nineteen three months of anxious care till at length i have taken the extreme step of writing to him 
our chief distress has been caused by the state of poor caroline who after sinking by degrees into such extreme weakness as to make it doubtful if she can ever recover full vigour has to-day been taken much worse her position is very critical the doctor says plainly that she is dying of a broken heart and that even the removal of the cause may not now restore her ought i to have written to charles sooner but how could i when she forbade me it was her pride only which instigated her and i should not have obeyed september twenty six charles has arrived and has seen her he is shocked conscience-stricken remorseful i have told him that he can do no good beyond cheering her by his presence i do not know what he thinks of proposing to her if she gets better but he says little to her at present indeed he dares not his words agitate her dangerously september twenty eighth after a struggle between duty and selfishness such as i pray to heaven i may never have to undergo again i have asked him for pity's sake to make her his wife here and now as she lies i said to him that the poor child would not trouble him long and such a solemnization would soothe her last hours as nothing else could do he said that he would willingly do so and had thought of it himself but for one forbidding reason in the event of her death as his wife he can never marry me her sister according to our laws i started at his words he went on on the other hand if i were sure that immediate marriage with me would save her life i would not refuse for possibly i might after a while and out of sight of you make myself fairly content with one of so sweet a disposition as hers but if as is probable neither my marrying her nor any other act can avail to save her life by so doing i lose both her and you i could not answer him september twenty nine he continued firm in his reasons for refusal till this morning and then i became possessed with an idea which i at once propounded to him it was that he should at least consent to a form of marriage with caroline in consideration of her love a form which need not be a legal union but one which would satisfy her sick and enfeebled soul such things have been done and the sentiment of feeling herself his would inexpressibly comfort her mind i am sure then if she is taken from us i should not have lost the power of becoming his lawful wife at some future day if it indeed should be deemed expedient if on the other hand she lives he can on her recovery inform her of the incompleteness of their marriage contract the ceremony can be repeated and i can and i am sure willingly would avoid troubling them with my presence till grey hairs and wrinkles make his unfortunate passion for me a thing of the past i put all this before him but he demurred september thirtieth i have urged him again he says he will consider it is no time to mince matters and as a further inducement i have offered to enter into a solemn engagement to marry him myself a year after her death september thirty later an agitating interview he says he will agree to whatever i propose the three possibilities and our contingent acts being recorded as follows first in the event of dear caroline being taken from us i marry him on the expiration of a year second in the forlorn chance of her recovery i take upon myself the responsibility of explaining to caroline the true nature of the ceremony he has gone through with her that it was done at my suggestion to make her happy at once before a special license could be obtained and that a public ceremony at church is awaiting her third in the unlikely event of her cooling and refusing to repeat the ceremony with him i leave england join him abroad and there wed him agreeing not to live in england again till caroline has either married another or regards her attachment to charles as a bygone matter i have thought over these conditions and have agreed to them all as they stand eleven p m i do not much like this scheme after all 
for one thing i have just sounded my father on it before parting with him for the night my impression having been that he would see no objection but he says he could on no account countenance any such unreal proceeding however good our intentions and even though the poor girl were dying it would not be right so i sadly seek my pillow october one i am sure my father is wrong in his view why is it not right if it would be balm to caroline's wounded soul and if a real ceremony is absolutely refused by charles moreover is hardly practicable in the difficulty of getting a special license if he were agreed my father does not know or will not believe that caroline's attachment has been the cause of her hopeless condition but that it is so and that the form of words would give her inexpressible happiness i know well for i whispered tentatively in her ear on such marriages and the effect was great henceforth my father cannot be taken into confidence on the subject of caroline he does not understand her twelve o'clock noon i have taken advantage of my father's absence to-day to confide my secret notion to a thoughtful young man who called here this morning to speak to my father he is mr theophilus hyam of whom i have already had occasion to speak a scripture reader in the next town and is soon going to be ordained i told him the pitiable case and my remedy he says ardently that he will assist me would do anything for me he is in truth an admirer of mine he sees no wrong in such an act of charity he is coming again to the house this afternoon before my father returns to carry out the idea i have spoken to charles who promises to be ready i must now break the news to caroline eleven o'clock p m i have been in too much excitement till now to set down the result we have accomplished our plan and though i feel like a guilty sinner i am glad my father of course is not to be informed as yet caroline has had a seraphic expression upon her wasted transparent face ever since i should hardly be surprised if it really saved her life even now and rendered a legitimate union necessary between them in that case my father can be informed of the whole proceeding and in the face of such wonderful success cannot disapprove meanwhile poor charles has not lost the possibility of taking unworthy me to fill her place should she but i cannot contemplate that alternative unmoved and will not write it charles left for the south of europe immediately after the ceremony he was in a high-strung throbbing almost wild state of mind at first but grew calmer under my exhortations i had to pay the penalty of receiving a farewell kiss from him which i much regret considering its meaning but he took me so unexpectedly and in a moment was gone october six she certainly is better and even when she found that charles had been suddenly obliged to leave she received the news quite cheerfully the doctor says that her apparent improvement may be delusive but i think our impressing upon her the necessity of keeping what has occurred a secret from papa and everybody helps to give her a zest for life october eight she is still mending i am glad to have saved her my only sister if i have done so though I shall now never become Charles's wife. End of Story 3, Chapters 4 through 6